This is a demonstration illustrating various capabilities of Excel. First note that the columns are labeled with letters, A, B, C, and so on, and the rows are labeled with numbers, 1, 2, 3, and so on. Let's start by creating some example data. I'll click in cell A1, enter 1, hit enter, enter 2, hit enter. Let's say I want this sequence to continue so we can do some calculations based on this counting of numbers. I can just select these two cells by dragging across them with the mouse. You can see a little fill handle appears. If we grab on that with the cursor, you note that the cursor changes appearance when you go over that little small square. If I drag down on that, we can extend this list as long as we like. I'm going to stop at 20. So now we have this list of numbers. Let's say I want to create another column now, which is some constant value times these numbers. And I might want to change what that constant value is in the future. So I want to define that constant. First, I want to create some space above these numbers. I'm going to click on this row, right-click on the mouse, and select Insert. I'm going to do that a couple of times. OK, now I can define uh, a cell with a constant value. I'm going to put that constant here and call an enter value of 2 for now. And just to show my work and make things look more clear, I'm going to call this constant C. So I'm just entering some text in cell A1. I can make this look even better by clicking on this, right justifying, making it bold. Click on the constant, left justify that. Now it's easier to read. So this column of numbers, I'm going to label that with a title also. I'm going to call it X. I can center this and bold it to make it look better. Let's say I want this column to be this constant times each of these values. I can call that uh, another value Y maybe. and just define my equation with text here. You can center this, make it bold. And now I can go ahead and create a formula that performs this function. Each cell in this column I want it to be equal to, so I hit the equal sign. That allows you to create a formula up here in the formula bar. I can either type in cell references like B1, or you can just click on those cells. So I click on this cell, it knows to grab cell B1 hit the multiplication symbol, the asterisk, and I click on this cell, which is A4. When I hit enter, it performs the calculation. You can always refer back to a cell's formula just by clicking on it, and it shows it in the formula bar. Okay, so let's say I want this formula to apply to each one of these rows. You might think you can just copy and paste this formula down. In fact, I'm going to try that first, see what happens, using the fill handle again. And obviously, we have some problems. We have some weird numbers and some undefined values. So let's see why. Again, this formula was B1, which is the constant, times the x value, A4. This cell is B2 times A5. So Excel is adjusting the A number as we would like. First it was 4, now it's 5. But it's also incrementing the B number, which we don't want to do. We want that to remain constant. We always want to use B1 as the factor. So obviously this is not going to work. I can select these cells and clear them out either by right clicking and selecting clear or by hitting the delete key. All right, let's try again. So this formula, we have to tell it for this B1 cell, don't change its value when you copy and paste down. The easiest way, let me show you again, if we were creating this formula again from scratch, again we hit the equal sign, the constant. Now this is called a, a relative cell reference. If you copy and paste this, the B and 1 will change as you change row and column numbers. If you don't want that to change, you just hit the F4 key or enter these dollar signs in front of e both the column and the row numbers. The dollar sign tells Excel this is a, an absolute reference and don't change this when you copy and paste. Then we say times our X value, which is again a relative reference. This will change when we copy and paste down. So now, if I take this formula and paste it down, drag it down, it is doing what it's supposed to. Every cell in this column is two times the value in this column. What's nice about this is now I can change this constant, and everything updates automatically. All right, let's say we want to keep a running sum of these terms. So I'm going to write out some text to describe that. We could call this uh, another variable z, maybe. 
and it could be the sum of each of these c times x terms. Right now, our text is larger than the column or wider than our column. We can adjust that just by selecting the column and dragging this, this vertical line here, which makes the column larger. We can uh, bold this like the others and center it. Again, this, this, this row here, it's just text to help show our work and define what we're doing here. It's not required to do these calculations. So what this column should be is the running sum of these elements. So first, we would start with just this cell equaling that cell. That's the current sum. Every subsequent cell should equal the previous cell plus this new cell. So uh, cell C4 plus cell B5. And that is working properly. 2 plus 4 is 6. I want to continue this, these calculations. Drag it down, and it does it for us. 6 plus 6 is 12, 12 plus 8 is 20, and so on. So it's very easy to create data, uh, do basic calculations, and create formulas in Excel. Excel can also perform calculations over ranges of cells. And there are many functions to help you do various calculations. So let's say our only goal was to calculate this number, the sum of this entire column. An easy way to do that was, would be with just a single formula using an Excel function. I can store that sum uh, right in this cell, right here. So this should equal. I want to sum all these numbers. If we click on this function toolbar icon, this will let us paste a function into our formula. If I click on that, it'll show us all of the functions Excel has. It has many tools for doing statistics calculations, financial calculations, and many other tasks. If you click on the All category, it shows us every single function that Excel knows about. If we scroll down, you can see Excel has lots of functionality built in. If I click anywhere in here and hit the S key, it should show us the functions that begin with the letter S. And I'm looking for a sum, and there it is. If you click on the function name, it shows you the syntax, what you have to type in to get it to work. Or if you just click on it, it will insert this function into your formula. So there it is. So first step is to enter this range of cells. Excel has kind of assumed, has kind of assumed that we wanted to enter this range of cells. But we can change that by clicking on this button. And now we can drag across the things we want to sum up. We want to sum up this range of cells. Enter. And OK. And now we've just created the sum of these cells. If we prefer to have this cell appear beneath the column instead, we can just drag it by placing the cursor over the highlighted rectangle and then dragging it to here. Maybe we'd want to center that, make it bold, and maybe indicate that this is the sum of y. If you already know the name of a function, you can type it in directly. So let's say we want to create the sum of this column. Just say equals. I know the name of the function is sum. Open parenthesis. Then I can drag across the cell range. Close the parenthesis. Hit enter. It's a much faster way to create this type of formula. But sometimes the function wizard helps you figure out what you need to type in.